from most distances in most situations. This weapon has proved itself to me be extremely deadly. Oh, it's actually gonna fight you. Now. Ah! Oh my god, this thing is fucking crazy. This That guy's got TTV in his name. He deserves everything that he gets from me. Our UAV is the area. <laughs> guys, ass again. What's up, guys? Rocky Tactics here, and welcome to another weapon guide. This weapon guide is going to be about the Chinese service rifle, which is the QBZ-95, and the second DLC weapon, or, you know, they came out at the same time, but to me the second because it unlocks later on in the battle pass, but the second assault rifle in the Operation Redline Season 1 DLC for World War III. I can see this video being a little shorter than the K2C1, mostly because the QBZ to me isn't a very complicated weapon in its purpose in game. The QBZ is insanely controllable. It's about five weight, so a little lighter than the M416, but honestly, it behaves a lot like the M416. So if you're a big fan of the M416, I think that this weapon has a couple of advantages over that one that I do want to talk about in this video, but they behave extremely similarly, even in the way that you're going to build them and a lot of the time in their purpose. If you don't know how the weight system works in World War III, it's, it's weight. You know, the heavier you are, the slower you'll be, the less mobile you'll be. And the QBZ has a slight advantage over the M4 in that particular category. It is one bar lighter, which it's not a huge advantage, but an advantage nonetheless. I also think it feels as though the Chinese 5.8 by 42 is a little more, is, is a little better than the American 5.56 NATO at piercing armor. I felt like I was eating through armor slightly faster than I would, but that may have something to do with the slightly higher fire rate than the M416. And I compare it to the M416 so much because the M416 is such a popular weapon platform in World War III. It's so versatile and it's a lot of people's favorite. And I think this gun handles sort of similarly, but I think it handles a little better because it's a bullpup, which is another one of the differences. Um, the advantage of a bullpup is that indoors, you know, you have a little more maneuverability. Your barrel isn't sticking through the doorways, but outdoors you kind of keep the same ability to stretch out. And I really didn't use the compact barrel on this thing because I feel as though I don't need to. I think that the QBZ is a very compact package as it is. And it also performs extremely well and in pretty much any range. Um, the recoil may stop you from stretching out really, really, really far. But for the most part, the QBZ performs well at almost all common engagement ranges. And I think that that's one of the reasons the weapon is so good. Now, some disadvantages that it has over the AR-15 platforms is going to be the first thing is that it's a bullpup and the way that the gun is designed, it kind of takes up a lot of space on your screen, especially when you use the setup that I found to be the best, the setup that I'm going to show you that you should use. Um, it kind of takes up a lot of space on your screen. And I found myself kind of in a low ready a lot. I found myself using the point shooting mechanic at close range a lot, specifically because I didn't want this, you know, my massive bullpup rifle taking up the entire right side of my screen. Now I have not leveled up the QBZ to max, but honestly in the game World War III, you don't really need to. Um, once you get into, you know, pretty much 30 and up, most of the time on most of the weapons, you're really only unlocking, you know, sights. You're unlocking scopes and sights and things like that most of the underbarrel lasers um most of your muzzle attachments they're gonna unlock pretty early so 
I didn't I didn't level the gun up all the way, but one disadvantage that this weapon does have over most of the AR-15 platforms and even some of the AK platforms is that it's not very versatile in its purpose. You're not going to be able to make a very good squad weapon or support weapon out of the QBZ. The QBZ is very specialized. The QBZ is specifically an assault infantry weapon. The QBZ specializes and excels in taking out the other team's infantry with violence, speed, and momentum. Indoors, outdoors, close range, medium range, stretching out to the further distances, this weapon specializes in taking out the enemy soldiers, and it's really no reason to use it to do anything else. With things like the M416, even the um, the regular M4, the one that's not German built, the one that h &K did not build, the, the M4 service rifle, the standard issue service rifle, you can really kit them to do a couple of different things. You can kit them to be longer range. You can kit them to be shorter range. You can kit them with drum magazines, which is not an option that we have on the QBZ. So there's a lot of things you can do with the AR platform or AR base platforms like the MSBS and the AK platforms that you cannot do with the QBZ. But the QBZ excels at its purpose. And that's why I find it to be honestly one of the best assault rifles in the game. It doesn't have extreme flexibility like the K2C1 does. It doesn't have extreme modularity like the AR platforms and AK platforms have. But what it does have is very controllable recoil. Mid to high damage bullets on every single trigger pull. A good fire rate. Pretty much everything that a infantry rifle needs. It is that. The infantry rifle in world war three it has no other purpose it doesn't do much else very good but it is an infantry rifle which is almost all that you can ask for it's kind of a one trick pony but it's such a good pony it's such a good pony the pony is so good at doing its one trick that sometimes it outdoes the ponies that are jacks of all trades but now i'm going to cut to rocky live and he's gonna show you exactly how to set this thing up and which setup he had the most success running and what he kind of wouldn't do because there's literally no point. All right, the QBZ setup. Let's see it. My shit is still not named. I don't care, I'm lazy, fuck off, right? But first thing, the ARX two time, right? So it's kind of big. It is, it kind of takes up a lot of space on your screen, but it's got a super clean sight picture. It's the one with like the green dot in the middle and then the four lines protruding from it. It's got a super clean sight. We've got the classic vertical for horizontal. We've got the AK-15 comp, which you I like putting the AK-15 comp on a lot of shit, mostly because vertical recoil is so easy to control, you just pull down. Horizontal, not so much. So we got a full horizontal build for this, right? I think I have it to like level 32 or something like that. But this build has performed so well, I felt like I could throw it out there as kind of what you should be doing or what I do. I'm not going to tell you guys what you should be doing, uh, but you could run like the compact or the marksman if you wanted to run the compact. And it would be a little shorter, a little more recoil, but you would get a, a little bit of close range damage and then vice versa for the marksman. That's up to you guys. This is just what I have been doing with the gun. I never used a medium mag because I want 30 rounds, okay? Not 20. So it's actually pretty simple. And then I had it in an extra tester slot, so I added AP. Because why not? A mag of AP can't really do you any wrong. But um, that's pretty much the setup. There is two variants for it that you can use before you actually unlock it at Battle Pass Tier 28. And they're not all that good because they both have 20 round mag. So I didn't really enjoy using the blueprints that they give you for the damn thing because the 20 round mag just ruins it. I think the potato grip doesn't really work very well. This one has irons, which I kind of want to make a video on that. That's in the works, the whole iron sight thing. I want to know exactly how viable irons are in this game. So we'll look into that, but that's pretty much the setup. It's the ARX two time. It's the classic vertical grip for horizontal. It's the large magazine, AP, TAC laser, standard barrel and ak-15 comp and this thing goes crazy and another thing that i found that looks super cool it takes up more on your screen but the rail riser just looks sick 
this thing looks like some starship troopers thing what some starship trooper shit while you're using it and and then you can use like a cheek riser like a cheek rest to rise that up a little bit because then it makes a little more sense with the fact that you put a rail riser but the rail riser isn't necessarily realistic i think that this gun you probably wouldn't use that irl but it looks super sick and then you have a couple of different options for the handguard i went with the one with like the the picatinny style rail because i thought that that looked cool and then you could put like a like a almost like a hogue like a like a rubber grip on it because i thought that looked pretty cool uh once you unlock the battle pass versions of the guns you'll have the snake why is the snake camo not like why does it look that way You'll have the snake camo and you'll have the red metallic. I think that's just my graphic settings. But you'll have the snake camo and you'll have the red metallic, which I'm going to take off because I kind of like the way it looks. But that's the setup. And then I've got the Lebedev behind it. You can run the Glock. Uh, the DMG9 milli is really good. Uh, I'm using ceramic armor and a titanium material helmet. I like to do that whenever I can because you can't... I don't want to use steel armor because the weapon is, is super heavy, kind of. But this is pretty much the setup. And then in the backpack, you guys kind of put whatever you want to put in here. I usually will put like a grenade launcher and then maybe I'll put the combo in here as a suppressor and a first aid kit. And then I've got my thermal and my SPD reflex, which is probably my favorite site that I can put in the backpack. So there you have it. But that pretty much sums it up for me. I hope you guys enjoyed another weapon guide for World War III. I'll put in the comments if you enjoyed this one and the last one and if you haven't seen the last one i will link it in the description as well as put it at the end of this video which weapon you guys would want to see next i thought about the m4 thought about the m416 i thought about the alpha ak i thought about the scar uh, i thought about a couple of pretty popular options that i see a lot in the game and if you have any suggestions for what the next weapon guide should be go ahead and put that in the comment section but with that Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.